These people are reporting for work. Hi, Scotty. Morning. John. Morning. It's a typical day, typical work location. And when it comes to driving, they'll face the same hazards that you and I face when we get behind a wheel. Unless we stay alert to these hazards, any one of us can become involved in a serious accident. As Mr. Smith mentioned, over a third of our motor vehicle accidents happen while we're either backing up or entering or leaving a parking place. Hi, ladies. So I hope this program on proper backing and parking will help prevent some of those accidents. Let's take a look at some of the conditions that can lead to trouble. Good morning. This is the company safety line for Friday, August 24th. Regretfully, we have another bell system fatality to report this morning. A South Central Bell installer died last Wednesday from severe head injuries. Trouble can start at the beginning of the day before you even get into your vehicle. How do you feel? Do you have a cold? Did your day start with an argument? Your attitude and your health can affect your ability to concentrate on driving. And there's another thing to consider before you get behind the wheel. Make sure you plan the safest possible route to your work location. Avoid congested areas and eliminate the need for excessive or hazardous maneuvers when you arrive at your destination. Do you think of anything else? How about the condition of the vehicle? A mirror that isn't right? A burned out turn signal, brake light, or backup light. Any one of these can get you into trouble. That's why a daily pre-driver check, as outlined in Appendix 16 of the Bell System Accident Prevention Plan, is required prior to driving any company vehicle. Always verify that your vehicle is in good operating condition at the beginning of each day. As soon as you arrive at your work location, immediately assess the area. Look for conditions that could cause problems. Look for children playing, traffic congestion, parked vehicles, or other objects such as fire hydrants that could become hazards. And remember, unless it's necessary to use the vehicle for work area protection or to use it as a tool, it should always be parked legally. Look for posted parking restrictions and park facing in the same direction as the traffic flow. If at any time, due to the nature of the job, the vehicle must be located on the traveled portion or on the shoulder of the road, work area protection must be used. As a driver of a Bell System motor vehicle, you're expected to practice defensive driving 100% of the time. Let's take a look at another parking decision most of us face every day. You've planned your route so that you arrive on the same side of the street as the work location. Before you slow down and begin looking for a suitable parking place, signal your intention to other drivers in the area. Signaling is of utmost importance since the interruption of traffic flow increases the chance of a rear-end collision. Now slow down and survey the area. Look for the safest available parking spot, one that will allow you to park without backing and one that gives your vehicle the least exposure. Yes, there is parking in the driveway, but that would require backing. Pull through is always the first choice. Here we can pull in and pull out without backing the vehicle. When selecting a parking location, Avoid locations immediately adjacent to or across from intersections or driveways. Choosing the right location can save your vehicle from being sideswiped or backed into while parked. The single most important thing to remember is to avoid locations which require backing. With this in mind, let's look at another parking situation. Here too, you've planned your route. You're conscious of your surroundings, vehicles ahead, vehicles behind, children playing, and other vehicles leaving parking places or coming out of driveways. You signal your intention and you quickly look over the area for the safest possible parking spot. You see there's no suitable pull-through parking on the street. However, because you were thinking ahead, you recall passing a pull-through parking space half a block back. 
making right turns, come around the block, park here and walk to the job. In this particular case, it's the only good choice. You shouldn't have backed into the driveway or into a parking space between two other vehicles. Parking here will allow you to pull in and pull out without backing. Here's another situation that requires walking to the job. This is a very busy street. There's no available on-street parking. It would be dangerous to stop in traffic and back into a driveway. Let's continue on. Make a right turn at the next corner and park on the side street. Then walk to the job. Remember, pull through on-street parking is by far the best choice. Let's face it though, there are times when backing is your only choice. But don't forget, when you make the decision to back, you're taking an action that leads to over 30% of our motor vehicle accidents. So be careful. It's important to understand that backing accidents are preventable, but that backing puts you in a very vulnerable position. Hi, Jay. Hi, Jay. Not only is your vision severely limited, but the vehicle reacts differently. Let me show you what I mean. When traveling forward, the rear wheels closely follow the path of the front wheels. However, when turning left or right while backing, the front of the vehicle makes a wide sweep. Since your attention is usually to the rear, this makes it much more difficult to avoid trouble. In this case, we've decided that our only choice will involve backing into this driveway. Always back in and drive out. Why? Because we've just looked at the area. We're aware of any obstacles. And we'll be backing out of traffic, which is far easier and far safer than backing into it. Before backing, sound your horn to alert anyone in the area. Whenever possible, use a guide. If you have another employee riding okay, with fine. you, ask him or her to get out and guide Got you. It. An employee passenger should automatically get out and help without being asked. But you are the driver, and it's your responsibility to operate the vehicle safely. So don't hesitate to tell the passenger that you want help. And when guiding a vehicle, be sure to maintain eye contact with the driver. Okay. Don't stand in his blind spot. If you always have eye contact, there should be no confusion. Use hand signals as well as voice commands. If a second person is not available, and you're unsure of what is behind you or of your proximity to a hazard, stop. Get out and look. Pick out a prominent object to use as a reference point as you back. Constantly check your progress and position in relation to that object. Back very slowly. It will give you more time to react should you get into trouble and allow you to keep better track of your vehicle's position. Be aware of the hazards of the blind area to your right and whenever possible back to your left. Never open your door or put your head out your window while backing. Either could cause injury to you or damage to the vehicle. Backing from these positions also leaves you completely blind to anything directly behind your vehicle. Use your mirror in addition to looking over your shoulder. When backing is necessary, never back any further than is absolutely essential. In this case, back only until you've cleared the road and the sidewalk. That's all. Walk from here to the house. <laughs> 